Hello, hello and welcome to a very restless vinegar. You're very restless, aren't you? Uh, this is Let Me Boy to Sleep. Q&A Friday. Q&A Friday. Try and calm down a bit. He's having a little trouble calming down because there's a new doggy in the area. A neighbour downstairs has got a, a dog. And they're currently in the garden. So he's a little bit... <laughs> to say that he's excited is an understatement. But... We're going to stay up here, Vinny, because I've got to make this recording. In it, eh? Will you calm down? Honestly, he won't sit still for a second. Vinny, you need to sit still. Good girl. Let's have a quick drink of water. You can't be fidgeting the whole time. No. You need to calm yourself down, Vinny. Good boy. Can't lay down. Lay down. So, yeah, welcome. Let me boy to sleep. The My name is Jason New Land. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. Vinny's being very extra active right now for some reason. Uh, I'm a little bit late making this recording. Although this is... Vinny, just calm down. He's, he's like all over the place. Um, you're annoying me now. Honestly. Uh, I wasn't really... I uh, didn't feel too great yesterday, so I didn't make the Q&A Friday on a Friday. It's actually Saturday now. Vinny... Just, that's enough. He's hyperactive. Just calm down, Vin. I know there's a dog downstairs, but you're not going to see it. He might see it one day, but not today. We don't really take him in the garden very often. He goes for walks. The only reason with, with the garden is lots of cats and the neighbours don't like it. If you let your dog off when there's cats around, they complain to the council. So, generally, I'll take him in the garden if it's late at night and he just needs a wee-wee. I'll keep him on the lead. Um, or if it's raining, you know, just so I don't get too wet, I'll stand under the tree or something. But most of the time, I'll take him out, you know, to the park or something. Don't I, Vin? Yeah? So, just to let you know, I have a website, jasonnewland.com. I'm still working on that. He is annoying me. This, this, he literally cannot sit still for a second. What are you going to be like if the other neighbour gets a dog? Because we've got, yeah, the other neighbour downstairs is talking about getting a dog as well. So there'll be three dogs in the building. Three out of six flats with dogs in. And Vinny's used to being the only dog. So, I don't know what he's going to do. He's going to be a little bit confused, I think. I mean, that dog down there actually woke me up the other day. In the middle of the night, it was 2.30. And I heard this screaming. Well, like howling or very... Very... Oh, seriously, mate. Calm, lay down now. Lay down now. Lay down now. That's, en that's enough. That's enough. Calm down. Calm down, baby. Calm down. That's it. Calm down. No, calm down. Or you go in the bedroom. No, you don't want that, do you? <laughs> He's got a, a big burst of energy. He was so calm until about five minutes ago. Now he's biting me. Finny, you're still going to be the king of the castle. Yes, you will be. You'll still be the king. Oh, you're, you're a bit aggressive. You're being a bit aggressive today now. Calm, set, calm yourself down. Yeah, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, he... Um, 
yeah, I heard it's two thirty in the morning. I was concerned. I, I heard this like, um, 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 and all this stuff. Like, what's going on? The neighbours are at it, and I thought, oh, good, good on them. Then I thought, oh no, it's definitely sounded like a distressed dog to me. So I went down, and I heard where it was coming from. So what I did is I rang them. I didn't knock on the door because that was going to potentially disturb the other neighbours. So I rang them just to see if they were okay. Because I was thinking maybe the dog was distressed for a reason. Um, you know, that maybe the neighbour needed help. But anyway, she didn't answer the phone. But then uh, I think called me back. So, oh, what do you want? I said, oh, they did... Did you call me? Well, you know I called you, otherwise you wouldn't have called me, would you? Obviously I called you, didn't I? You know I called you. All right, I just want to know, why? <laughs> well, I just, I heard some weird noises coming out of your flat. I was making sure you're okay. Oh, it's my puppy. So I don't know why, why would the, why would the pup, why, why would it be like, Oh, I can't. you are so annoying right now, Vinny. I do not have the patience for you. <laughs> Give me kisses. Okay, we're all right now. Good. He's. This is the first time I've seen him be like this for a long time. He's normally fairly calm. He can settle, but he can't settle. He's really, really, like, all over the place. Calm down. Calm down, I'll go away. It's your two choices. I can put you into the bedroom while I do this recording. But I like you being part of the recording, just not making as much noise as you're making. Keep you can hear it moving around. Can't you hear it? Like just settle yourself down. Good. Can't no, I'm not fighting. This is not a good time to have a punch up, Vinny. He wants to play fight. He's trying to bite me. Like, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Just chill out, baby. Chill out. Uh, yeah, so... And she said, oh, it's the puppy. And she's got a new puppy or something. I'm like, why was it distressed then? So, like... If you're not if you if you're not in there, then it's, it's on its own. So that's why it's distressed. But if you're in the flat, why would the dog be distressed? And then I thought maybe she doesn't take the dog to bed with her. Like Vinny sleeps with me. Not everyone does that, do they? So maybe the dog's in a different room, or um, like just not in that room is getting distressed because the dog it's on its own all night long. And I guess it just get used to it. But I, yeah, Vinny sleeps with me. So I, I kind of figured everyone does that, but I guess they don't, do they? Not everyone sleeps with their dogs. Vinny, I'm, I'm basically sleeping in Vinny's bed now. But yeah, the dog was doing it, I think, the last, last night as well. Howling, and, well, not howling, but just like whining and stuff. And I get a little bit concerned that well it does Vinny it did got Vinny started barking this morning about four o'clock. You could hear it. Blind it sounds like it's doing it now. Oh, that's another dog. Well the dogs they, they kind of they stir each other up. So one dog barks and another dog barks and another dog barks. Sounds like a little rhyme, doesn't it? <sighs> Canelo versus Belanga. That's some night. One o'clock in the morning. So that'll be on. Going to be watching that. Um, probably, I don't think I'll be up at one, but hopefully get up about two or three and just rewind it and watch it live. So that's tomorrow. So it's a big, it's Canelo. He's the, for those that don't know, he's super middleweight, unified, all titles I think that Canelo's going to get beaten just 
it's probably about time he did. Like he's he's been beaten twice before. Got beaten by Mayweather, like ten years ago or something, a long time ago, when he was just a youngster. And then he got beaten by Bivol when he went up to light heavyweight. Well, the second time because he went up to light heavyweight and fought for the world title a few years back, and he won it. Knocked out the world title, Sergeyev. Is it Sergeyev? I think. So he knocked him out, but then he went back down to super middleweight. So when he went back up again, this time he fought Bivol, who is, well, he's pound for pound, one of the greats at the moment. And I don't think now... You know, I think if if he really wanted, if Canelo wanted to really, really make a statement, two two things, yeah, he'd go up to light heavyweight and fight uh, Bertiov, 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 who is the uh, who's got most of the titles in the light heavyweight division. He's knocked out every single one of his opponents. And he's got three of the world titles. Bivol's got the other one. And Bivol's also unbeaten as well. So if he fought him and won. And then went up to Cruiserweight. And won a world title at Cruiserweight. And then went up to Heavyweight. And fought Usyk. Because uh, Usyk wouldn't have to be so heavy. He could lose some weight and just be on the cusp of Heavyweight. And he'd be more comfortable, but then uh, I think uh, there's not a lot of difference between cruiserweight and heavyweight at the lower level. If that makes sense. Oh, for, now he's so I'm watching TV. I'm watching the boxing here, and he's now turned it off. Just calm down. Unless you need a poo, and you're turning around because you need a poo, and I'm being very insensitive. But that's not what you want, is it? You want something. It's like I've turned the switch on. You know, like I put someone's put extra special supercharged batteries up his bum, and he suddenly, yeah, oh, he just trod on my balls. Ow! He doesn't do that very often. Wonder why not? <laughs> he doesn't usually crush my testicles. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's uh, that's what I would try and do with uh, Canelo. So I forget all the. The little fights, not little fights, but like the the lower level fights, go go up. See how far you can go up, and see if you can win the world heavyweight title. So build it up, like go light heavyweight, try and win that title, and then even if he doesn't win, it's going to be an epic fight. And then go to cruiserweight, and it's uh, Pattaya, not Pattaya. Pattaya, uh, I forget his name, but he's like the best cruiserweight in the world, world title, world champion. So fight him, Pattaya, 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 something like that. Right, that's it. Seriously, he's still running around. He still can't calm down. You need to calm down now, Finny. Calm down now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right. That's enough. Calm down. Calm down. Oh, he's calmed down now. Right. Lay down. Lay down. I mean, I'm trying to hold my phone so I can see the questions, and he's literally right in my face. Now he's... Oh, good. That's it. Oh, he listened. Good boy. Good boy. Now he's calm. Wow. So, um... Yes, Q&A Friday. I've also... So I've got my website, all my, all my stuff is on there, and I'm trying to 
still add stuff and it's taken forever forever honestly it's really it's beginning to become a bit tedious to be honest it's it's just it's a chore it's a real chore but I'm working on it but I just uh, I almost wish I didn't have a website don't say that because I might just delete it um, yeah and it's it's kind of pointless I haven't one I don't know if there's any reason because no one people don't seem to be interested in my old stuff it's just like you're as good as the latest recording seems to be so it's just the new the latest recordings and that's it and I'm starting to feel like a radio show you know like radio shows it's a live set live radio and then it's done and everyone forgets about it and that that's like gone that wasn't what I was sort of trying to do these recordings were hopefully going to be useful for years to come like individ as individual recordings on their own but doesn't seem that anyone's really too interested in listening to the old stuff so I don't know I'm not sure what to do but I've also got a Facebook group Jason Newland's Boring Group so please you know if you want to join you can ask me questions on there for future Q&A Fridays so what I'll do is I'm just going to go to the go to that group oh, really what the heck was that okay go to that group now let's have a look <sighs> I currently got 186 members on here so I'll go back okay so I just want to say thank you to Mary Jo Liz for saying uh, she posted a comment I listen to your podcast every night so helpful with my insomnia. Thank you. It's very kind of you. Very kind. I'm not making a video of this recording. Which is lucky because of the amount of... Um, I don't know what it was with him. Is it like the buzzes? The, the speedies or whatever they call them? That he had. Because he, I've closed the door... I think if the door had been open, it might have been in and out, in and out, in and out, like between rooms. But because I closed the door, it's a little bit penned in with me, with me. But Opelu, uh, so I'm watching boxing right now. It's selling, it's live, and it's in New Zealand, and it's on mute. And I don't know any of the boxers at all. Never heard of any of them. So I just got it on in the background. It's co co promoted by Joseph Parker, who's by far the most famous New Zealand boxer that there is. It's uh yeah. This is the second heavyweight match. Uh, I don't know any of these people, honestly. It's just one bloke here has had 15 losses, so I'm, I'm guessing he might lose. <laughs> you don't know. Who knows? Who knows? I don't. Do you? No. Right, so if you, if you ever try and send me a friend request, unless you kind of, we get chatting or something on, you know, like on the group, uh, the best thing is just to join me, join the Facebook group, Jason Newland's Boring Group. And I don't really add friends on anymore. That's the best way to sort of contact me. Yeah. Right, I'm just trying to find it now. Jason, where's my thing? Jason's Boring Group. Right. So, I hope everyone's well. And we have some questions. I have five. 
five questions. It's quite warm in here as well. Whew. So, so everybody, I do apologise for being late, but and it happens every now and then. But yesterday, I just oh, I didn't feel up to anything. Physically, I was all right. I just didn't, you know, wasn't, I didn't, I wasn't, um, yeah, it just wasn't, wasn't uh, my day. So, Ben is the first question. And the first question, any holidays planned with Vinny? Uh, no. Uh, that's, that's quite a yeah, it's a quick answer. No, I don't. Haven't got anything planned at all. Uh, nothing. No, not a sausage. You like sausages, don't you, Vinny? <laughs> yes, you do. Uh, I'd like to, you know, one day, but there's nothing going to be happening anytime soon. Not in the next few years. I'm probably not going to be able to go anywhere or do anything really for a few years but it'd be nice you know to eventually go away with him take him to a, a doggy hotel somewhere um in the country in this country that'd be nice go somewhere that's dog friendly and i don't know just we'll see uh, maybe Maybe I'll try and... I'm not, I've not even taken him into town yet. He's not even been into town. He doesn't like the bus. I was going to take him into town a few times. But every time we got on the bus, he was shaking and only got as far as up the road. So I got off the bus because he, he seemed so distressed. And it's way too far to walk. Even, even walkers would struggle. Well, probably not, but, you know, it's it's not walking distance. It's like two, two and a half hours. That's too far. Uh, so nothing planned as for yet. Um, okay, well, next question. What's your aim with uni? What are you looking to do after you complete your course? Hopefully I'll still be alive. So I'll be 60 when I finish that. So my aim is to still be here. Um, I'm not doing... I'm just... Basic, what basically, 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 the study in psychology, the degree that I'm doing, is my new hobby. So that's all it is really. It's it's something that I'm interested in. I've now gone on to the portal, the Open University portal. All the coursework is on there. I've got the book through the post. I think last week or the week before, I've been looking through the essays and stuff like that and it's looking good like it, it it's organized in a way that I think that I can I will be able to be quite comfortable with which is good so I'm, I'm looking forward to doing it I, I can't really well I can start studying but I can't start actually doing anything you know until October when it starts October the 8th I think it is but yeah I suppose I I'm just I'm just doing it for for my hobby because I don't really have a hobby so it'd be, it'd be nice to to have something and you know there's quite a few books to get and to read and I do find it a very very fascinating subject and the more I well, I've been like interested in it for decades, but I never really, I guess, had the self belief that I'd be, I suppose, capable of starting, never mind completing such a thing, you know, degree. But now that I know that I I can do a degree because I've already got one, this is going to be. I imagine this would be more fun than the other one. Because the, 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 the last degree, it was 
quite high because it was counselling and it was very practical. It was predominantly practical. I mean, there's there's still a lot of classwork and coursework and um, academic side to it. However, the practical side was, you know, a big part of it because it was counselling. And that's the part that I excelled at or I was best at. Like, I mean, between the academic, not above anyone else, but within myself, compared to the academe. See, I don't even know how to say it. Compared to the coursework, I was better at the practical side. And that's where I... I guess because that was what I was more interested in, like putting it into practice. But at the same time, it was, it was difficult, like emotionally difficult. And with the psychology course, it's not going to be. The only emotional side of it will be my own, you know, my own moods, and I guess whatever comes up from studying, you know, especially with the, probably with the childhood um, psychology, which is the first module that I'm doing. It's, but, yeah, so it's, it's just, it's kind of a hobby, but I don't do hobbies lightly. I, I put a lot of energy into hobbies. So, really, there's, you know, I, it's a little bit too late really to be starting a new career because I will have, you know, I'll have a degree when I'm 60. In order to be a psychologist, I probably need to get a, or to even work in that kind of thing, I'd need to probably get a master's as well. So that's another year or two. And then five years later, I'll be retired. So even if I did get myself qualified enough to get employed, what's the chances of anyone wanting to give me a job in my 60s? Knowing that I'm only going to be there for a few years. So yeah, it's, there's no, it's not really a job out of it. I, I, I like to think that I will, it will... improve my mind, uh, improve my brain, potentially improve my life. That's kind of a big part of it. It's not just about the, I mean, it's, it's good to be active, you know, uh, mentally active. And quite often at the moment, I seem to, it's about what comes out of my brain rather than what goes into my brain so it'd be nice to be a bit more focused on putting stuff in there with the studying because at the moment it seems to be like when I'm building a website or if I'm making recordings or I'm you know designing stuff whatever it's very much outward energy it'd be nice to have some inward energy to to put something inside, to put something, you know, some new knowledge or some knowledge to replace the old knowledge or to remind myself of stuff that I already used to know. But I'd like to see if I can be an academic, not an academic, that's probably not right, but to be not an academic, but to be academic, to, to be able to hold my own Ooh, uh, now to be able to hold my own and well, I want to get a, a first I, I want to get the highest mark that I can get and I feel I can do it at this point now I don't know I'm not sure where I am with retaining information and I don't know because it's 
I'm not sure, but it's, it's, it's for fun anyway. I'm doing it for the fun, but I do take things seriously when I do them. And, yeah, so I... Does this make sense? Yeah, so I guess when I complete the course, I'll be 60, maybe, if I'm able to, and if, I st if I'm still, you know interested in what I'm doing then perhaps I'll do another course perhaps a masters in psychology perhaps even just do another undergraduate but then depends whether or not I can afford to do that or not which will be another I guess be another six years part time <laughs> so yeah, I mean, in in a, in an ideal world, I'd be twenty one. <laughs> so no, in an ideal and with a mess. No, in the ideal world, I would probably get my degree, then get a master's, then get a PhD. All just for the fun of it. To one day be able to call myself a doctor, Doctor Jason. I just feel that'd be cool. And I would get my my bank card changed with the word doctor. <laughs> I would. Even though it's not medical doctor. But is it doctor of philosophy, isn't it? So yeah, that's that's something that I would uh in an ideal world, but when we're talking I'll probably be late 60s to 70 before I complete that which means that I've only got about another 40 or 50 years to enjoy being a doctor because I mean you imagine there's a lot of if it, just the, the way that the advancement in technology is happening there's a good chance that things are really gonna excel hopefully you know in a, in a positive way I mean just stem cell therapy why that is not used more I can't really get my head around I think there's ethical reasons for that, so I don't know what they are, and I need to maybe do a bit of research in that. But it's some phenomenal things that already work that aren't being used. Um, like they've got that new drug for Alzheimer's, which could slow down the progression, yet they didn't allow it to be available free on the NHS in the UK. You have to pay for the drug. And it's expensive. I, I do realise that in other parts of the world, prescription drugs are really expensive. But in the UK, we're not the only country that does it, but we we have a. Well, it's not okay. Prescriptions are not free. Okay, that's that's it's not free, but it's really cheap compared to how much the drugs are. So I think. It, does that make sense? So it's free for some people if you're unemployed or if you're, I think, a pensioner. I think they might get it free. Or if you live in Scotland or Wales. I think, well, I know Scotland is, I think Wales as well. But if you, if you pay for it, it's like a set price, I think like ten, nine pound or something per prescription. But if you was to pay the cost, the actual cost of the medication, it would be way, way more. So it's even though it's on the NHS, it is subsidised by a huge amount. And the, yeah, the NHS decided that that Alzheimer's drug didn't, didn't do enough benefit to be financially viable. 
I'm sure people that you need that would use a drug wouldn't agree with that. I mean, how oh, anyway? So we've got advancements coming on. So I reckon it won't be long. A decade, two decades, maybe, and they'll things will be changed. We will be living a lot longer because things could be regenerated, body parts, whatever. Maybe not quite as advanced as Star Trek. You know, in the future maybe, but not not possibly the next twenty years. But eventually. You never know. That stuff excites me. It's amazing how different things excite me to what used to excite me years ago. <laughs> years ago. It's, isn't it, strange. What's your favourite biscuit? This is Ben. My favourite biscuit. Right, I don't eat biscuits anymore. Apart from when I do which I did recently. But what happened is I bought some digestives, just plain digestives, and over about a two-week period, I ate them. Like with a cup of tea, just the odd one, and I haven't bought any more. So I don't eat biscuits at all, generally, because I don't have sugar or anything. But if I was to, if I was to have a biscuit, my favourite biscuits, I would say, I like ginger nuts, or ginger biscuits, and, oh, you, oh, don't, you make me want to go and buy some biscuits now, maybe I should have them as a treat, I could eat a whole biscuit, a whole packet of biscuits, right this moment, I could, I could, honestly, uh, there's always, no matter what I eat, there's always a little little space for biscuits and cakes. I used to just remember that, even when I was a kid. I'd be completely stuffed after eating a dinner. Always room for dessert. Always. Like, without, just always room. <laughs> it's almost like it went into a different place. The dessert stuff, the, 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 yeah, the dessert tummy. There was the normal food tummy, stuff I had to eat, and then there was the nice stuff, a different tummy, which probably explains why I got so fat. So I, biscuits, uh, fig rolls. There's a certain fig rolls I like. I like all fig rolls, but there's a certain one which is a bit more crispy, the the biscuit is a bit more crispy there's another one that's a little bit more soggy but yeah I, uh, I like fig rolls um, I'm trying to think what are those ones there was the biscuits that my nan used to eat and I used to eat them as well and I started buying them and I had too many of them and I had to stop well I got fed up with them because I was I overdid it Overdid it. He's fidgety again. What other ones? Those are those ones that are covered in anything with sugar on them. The ones are covered in sugar, but they've also got like raisins in as well. But hard raisins. Oh, them ones are nice. Um, what other biscuits are there? I do like a digestive biscuit with a cup of tea or even a a what was it like a tea rich tea biscuit with a cup of tea as well yeah without a cup of tea a little bit dry a little bit dry even digestives a mm, little bit dry but with a cup of tea mm. or even the I mean even with like a drink of orange or something, uh, a digestive could be nice. I mean, what I least like to do is have like maybe half a digestive, then break it again in my mouth, break it up, crunch it a little bit, and then take a swig of orange juice or 
whatever, something like that. And let's let it all kind of mix together. Mm -mm. Beautiful. But, yeah, I don't eat biscuits anymore. Thanks, Ben. Now all I want to do is eat biscuits. It honestly is the most important thing in my mind right now. It's, there's nothing more important in life than to get some biscuits. Oh, I want some biscuits. Uh, how many downloads do you get off your website? This is the, the last question from Ben. How many website? How many downloads do I get off my website? Practically none. Some, but practically none. Hardly anyone visits my website. I realise that that's, that's not usually what people say. They like to brag and like, yeah, yeah, but I don't do that. I generally don't have hardly any any traffic to my website anymore uh, part of that reason is probably my own fault for keep but when, when when I can't afford to pay pay for it I take it off of on offline maybe for a month or two months and when I got the money I'll put it back online again so it's probably lack of continuity on my part and changing it continue you know, completely deleting stuff then redoing stuff and I was in that mood yesterday yesterday afternoon I was sitting here and I wanted I got that feeling of wanting to delete things not in a destructive way more in a change way to do something different and in order to do that thing I'm going to get rid of this thing but I caught myself and I turned off everything and went to bed <laughs> and it did the trick because the idea of deleting all everything and then it's hard to stop once I start you know, even if I if I deleted YouTube videos, then I'd have to go through hundreds of pages on the on the website. Things just farted. Oh man! And delete parts because the, the webs the blah, 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 the YouTube videos are on my website. It's uh, practically no traffic at all, which is kind of weird. Really, that's what I was saying earlier about no one using it. No one using the service because there are thousands of recordings available to download for free. But people don't really go on there. Maybe that will change. I don't know. I mean, I've had... It's, yeah, even in its peak, don't get many. Just hasn't. Yeah, don't get many at all. It seems that most people that what don't listen to my video, my recordings, they just listen online, on the various podcasts. Although I did think about getting an app, so you can download the app, whether it's uh, Android or iPhone or tablet, or whatever, and you can then every time I do a new recording, it'll just be uploaded, updated on the app, so you can always just listen. Save having to open Spotify or Apple or whatever. Um, I'll look into that in the future, but we'll see. So thanks for your questions, Ben. Diana asks me, are you still off the chocolate? I indeed is. I can't remember the last time I had chocolate. I mean, genuinely, I can't remember. It's been... Oh, wait a minute, it was yesterday. No, it's it's been... Four months. I stopped having sugar in my tea at least three months ago now. And although I do have the occasional fast food takeaway, I've pretty much stopped eating bread. Uh, that that just seemed to happen naturally. I didn't wasn't really aiming to do that. I haven't had. Apart from that one packet of biscuits, 
that's the only biscuits I've had for about a month. Before that, I used to have rich tea, low sugar, like pointless, <laughs> just pointless eating them. There was a big label, it was pointless eating them, there's no taste. So I had them and I didn't like eating them because they had no taste. Even, but here's, here's how bad they were. Because I stopped drinking tea with sugar in it. So it tastes horrible. Still, even after three months, it still tastes horrible. And I would dip in these low sugar, rich tea biscuits. I dipped them into the tea. And it didn't improve the taste of the biscuit. Which I thought it would. At the same time, it made the tea taste even worse. Even worse. That's how bad the biscuits were. The t honestly, the, the, I get them out of the packet sometimes. I get a cup of tea, put it on the side, then I go and get, get the biscuits and bring them out. And I could hear the teacup moaning. Like, oh no. Not them blimmin' things. They're horrible. It's rude. So yeah, haven't had any chocolate for although early on in my <laughs> in my uh no sugar career i did have some biscuits that had chocolate bits in them so technically that was chocolate i think they were chocolate they were just cookies but had chocolate in them but that's like a long quite a long time ago now so yeah i don't even think about getting in fact, I don't go into the petrol station. One of the reasons partly is because there's so many chocolate bars and stuff that if I don't see it, I don't want it so much. Which isn't true, because I do want it. <laughs> That's all I think about, chocolate. So now I'm thinking about biscuits and chocolate. Cheers, Ben and Diana. All I'm thinking about now, chocolate. In fact, chocolate biscuits. <sighs> oh, dark chocolate digestives. Ben, that's one of my favourite biscuits. Dark chocolate digestives. Oh, and because you can have like, it works on two levels. You can dip them into your tea, which, okay, it melts the chocolate, but it makes your tea a bit more like chocolatey. So it's, I don't know, it's quite nice. But you can also eat them with orange juice. And it just gives it a different, it's a different experience. Or you can put them in a fridge and when they're hard, oh, what's those? Oh, they're like digestive, chocolate digestives, but they've got toffee in the middle. <laughs> oh man, oh, I like them as well. And uh, yeah. Things like Oreos, never been, never been interested in Oreos. Just, I don't know, never really, it was a little bit too overkill with the chocolate. You know, it's it's no longer biscuit if it's just chocolate upon chocolate upon chocolate. Yeah, it wasn't really my thing, so I've never really been a big Oreo fan. I mean, they're, they're okay, but I wouldn't generally buy them. Shoplift them, but I wouldn't buy them. So still, yeah, it's worth stealing, but not to not to pay for. I don't steal. Can't blind me. I'm just messing around. What other things? Um, so I like a Kit Kat, but I like it cold. I like a cold Kit Kat. Don't like a warm Kit Kat. Not a big fan of Mars bars these days. Well, I mean, more recent years. Don't eat a Mars bar very often. Well, I didn't. What I did used to like to do is go into the petrol station and it, if they had a, a special deal at £1.50 for two large bars of chocolate, any two, and they'd have, they'd have like pictures of like maybe eight different bar, bars you could choose from. So I would do that. I suppose chocolate-wise, Crunchy is my favourite. Crunchy and Maltesers, which are the kind of similar experience in a sense you know but it's just uh, with the crunchy the the honeycomb is a different type of honeycomb to Malteser so I like them minstrels as well are oh, I like minstrels 
So that's something I used to get, especially like during my blockbuster years. I'd go and get maybe a few videos from or DVDs, or whatever, from blockbusters. And they used to have these big packs of Maltesers and minstrels. So I'd get a pack of them each, uh, you know, a big, big family pack. Family pack? Don't you mean a pack just for me? A family pack, just a normal size, I found. So, yeah. It's weird, it's like those days are gone. Not just blockbusters, but actually having fun eating chocolate and sweets and cakes. Oh, although, actually I did have a cake. Oh, I lied. I had a cake the other day. I did. I went to the, I think it was collecting a prescription. So there's a, like a, uh, not a sausage shop. They do have sausage rolls, and I got a couple of sausage rolls. So that was kind of like a treat thing. So I got two sausage rolls and a Cornish pasty and a cake. No, so I think it was a baker or tart. So I I got home. I had the Cornish pasty and the baker or tart and a cup of tea. And... I felt very good. I felt very happy. It was, yeah. Ah, oh, memories. Memories of sausage rolls and pasties and cakes. So yeah, I then I had the I let the sausage rolls cool down in the microwave and then I put them. Don't you mean when they heat up in the microwave? No, the microwave wasn't on. Blimey, and put them in the fridge. Although Cornish pasties, uh, uh, sausage rolls, sorry, I think they're nice. They can be nice when they're cold, but I probably prefer it when they're warm. Actually, if I was going to choose, probably, probably, yeah, probably would. Not the soggy ones though. I'm not so much into soggy sausage rolls. And Vinny doesn't mind because he always he lets he helps me to eat everything. He's also getting used to being hand fed to the point where he doesn't want to eat, doesn't want to do it unless I feed him by hand. The food's over there and he won't go near it. He'll actually beg me for food when it's over there. And then let me hand feed him. So I, I don't know what he's getting out of that. I guess maybe it feels good to be babied. I don't know, but if he gets him to eat his dinner, but I, I figure that if he's hungry enough, he'll just eat it. But he was completely ignoring, ignoring it, and it was a few feet away. I like curly whirlies, but they, I've not had a curly whirly since. Uh, well, the last time I had one, I suppose that's obvious, isn't it? What happened is I I had this thing about putting curly whirlies in the freezer. And because that way, especially in the summer, because they get, you know, chocolate gets all warm and soggy and ugh. So what I did is uh, I used to put them in the freezer and they were lovely but until I actually broke a tooth in half. So yeah and I think that the, it got stuck. The same the same thing kind of happened with some popcorn. It removed a filling like literally just knocked the whole filling out. <laughs> Of one of my teeth, so I kind of, yeah, I don't eat that stuff either anymore. So if I was, if if suddenly my sugar level was low and was always going to be low, and for some reason 
Curly Whirlies were the new super healthy food, the new superfood. You know, suddenly, I don't know, doctors realise, nutritionists realise that Curly Whirlies, Curly Whirly chocolate bars are actually the the best food supplement that anyone can have. Then... I'd probably give it a go again, but I would not freeze them. But at the same time, I don't really want to eat them soggy either, warm and soggy. But curly whirlies, they were a big thing when I was a kid. I used to love curly whirlies. They're very popular. I think they used to be bigger as well. trying to think anyway so that that's still <laughs> oh what am I thinking about cakes as well or oh. so thank you um Ben and Diana so I've, I've answered those questions so yeah I'm definitely still off the chocolate and the sugar uh yeah I've still I've still got a way to go but I've lost a fair amount of weight I've still yeah, I'd like to, I need to lose more fat. I'm not interested, I don't care about the weight, it's about the fat. I need to lose more of that. So, the next question is from Kathleen. Hello, Jason. I have three little questions. Thanks. Okay. Did you ever get your umbrella back after the neighbour borrowed it? You're all trying to wind me up today, getting me thinking about chocolate and biscuits, and now about my precious umbrella that I didn't get back. No, I'm still angry about it. <laughs> I didn't get it back. I don't care until I'm standing out there and it's raining. And the thing is, it was a good umbrella. It wasn't some, like, flimsy old thing. It was a proper, it was like an umbrella slash walking stick with a big spiky end, which is quite handy to have, you know, it's just, it was a good, quite heavy thing, it was nice, suited me, I still wouldn't have opened it during a, a really windy day, but generally it was pretty good, so yeah, I haven't, I, I need to look into getting a new one, I just had too many other things to pay out for. So, but I will probably have to look at getting another one. Because the amount of days it rains, especially in the winter. So, yeah, I never got it back. Arr. Never been so angry. Um, two, did you manage to get hold of a photo of the delivery and solve the mystery of the missing toilet rolls? No, I didn't. I, I gave up on it, if I'm honest with you. I just... It was it was winding me up a little bit. Because my mind started going a little bit over, into overdrive. Like, someone took it, someone stole it, someone... Uh, who was it? It's, it's just... And I, I thought... I did try and contact them. They didn't get back to me. And... You know, I wasn't here when it got delivered. I could have been here for the delivery I knew when it was coming so next time I'll just have to make sure I'm here and I collect it you know straight away but it was I don't know if it got stolen or they just didn't deliver it either way I, I was I paid for it. it they charged me for it so it was I don't know I mean, the good thing with with Uber Eats they deliver and they knock on the door and they kind of hand it to me. But with this, because it's delivered by Amazon, but it's Morrison Supermarket. And I asked them specifically to leave it outside. Otherwise, they asked me to help them carry it upstairs. And part of the reason I get delivery is so that I don't have to carry stuff. And because of my, my lower back issue, arthritis in my lower back. Now, I can list stuff. I can walk up and down the stairs 10 times carrying stuff. It's afterwards that's the problem. 
I mean, I'd, I start feeling it during as well. But afterwards, that's when I have to lie down for a few hours. Because it really, it has an effect on my back. And I just don't, don't I don't see, I don't want to put myself through that. And I, I never order huge amounts of stuff anyway. I don't get like huge, huge deliveries. So, and when I do, if I have, I do help them. Or what I used to do is get a neighbour to help. So my friend downstairs, I just say, just do me help, can you do me a favour? Can you help them bring it up? And I'll take it in if you can help me with the... Or if I was getting a, a delivery from the supermarket and they bought stuff in crates, because originally, when I first moved here, food deliveries from supermarkets all used to come in bags. And then, of course, they don't now. So you have to stand outside putting stuff into bags and all that bending over just, oh, I just can't do it. It's, it it's it's hard to explain it's like I can do it but it hurts a lot and because of the lower back thing I just if I bend over like if when I when I wash my hair over the bath with the shower thing it I struggle to stand up straight In fact, I can't, I can't do it for too long. But then when I go to start, I really struggle like to even put my back straight because of the pain. So bending over and putting stuff into carrier bags that I have to have in the house, it's just, a, a, it's just not, not practical for me really. So what I used to do is get my friend to come up and help me. My friend downstairs, uh, Luke. So when I had a delivery come in, he'd help me. So he'd, if he was around, I'd tell him when the delivery was and I'd just call him up or give him a knock. He'd offer to carry, help carry the stuff upstairs. And it'd also help me to take the stuff out of the crates and put it into carrier bags and help me get it into the into the kitchen and stuff. And what I'd also do is I'd buy stuff for him as well. So it would get like one delivery. It'd be a big delivery, but he'd have stuff and I'd have stuff. So yeah. But I don't have I don't have that anymore. Uh, I didn't have it for a while because he wasn't very well, so I couldn't really he'd still do it, but he wasn't physically too good to be kind of lifting stuff and that and his leg was he had a real problem with his leg for a while. I think it's, yeah, so this is a long way of saying no, I didn't find out where the toilet roll went. <laughs> I guess that was the question, wasn't it? I didn't, um, I just couldn't be bothered with it. Yeah, it was £10, uh, but it's like either it was incompetence. On the side of, not the delivery driver because they don't know what's in the bags. They don't look inside the bags. Everything's already packed before they, and it's just got a label like a one of four. You know, so it's one, two, three, one of four, two of four, three of four, four of four, whatever. And then, so that's what they've got. They don't pack the stuff themselves. They just pick it up from the supermarket. So they don't know what's supposed to what's there if does that make sense they're, they're not in they don't know like oh there's uh, some washing up liquid there's the uh the little vibrating rabbit you know whatever that's like in the shopping so they don't they're not aware of that so i can't really not really don't want to blame the delivery driver but at the same time if someone's stolen it from a doorstep, it's going to be someone that is either lives in this building or lives locally. Because what other reason would someone have to come in here? Really? So it's going to be, I mean, no one's going to travel. You're not going to be traveling from Wales to deliver my bog roll, you know? To deliver, to deliver, to steal. I got Wales in my brain because I had a friend who just visited Wales. 
So I don't know. It's uh, it went missing. It's not the first thing that's gone missing. I've had stuff that I didn't know if it either didn't turn up or it was stolen off my doorstep. I don't know. In the past, on a few occasions. So it's a case of just uh, trying to learn from it and hopefully it won't happen again. It's a case of letting it go, letting it go, like the umbrella, letting it go. So it's two things, umbrella and toilet roll. Third question from Kathleen is, this question will help if you have to have, have to have the hiccups. What? When did you last see a red roof? I suppose red slates. You know what? You're right. I haven't got the hiccups. It worked. There was a... I can't believe I got away with this, actually. There's a technique I learned years ago where if you put ice on someone's forehead, that because it's, it's a distraction thing, you've got different distraction techniques, but if you put ice in someone's forehead, that actually distracts them. Focus on the ice, distracts them from the hiccups. I did this at the beginning of my university course in 2007. I lived opposite a pub and I went in there and it was a busy Saturday night, I think. And there was a woman in there who I was just really liked. And I think she was married. I think she had a boyfriend. She he was with her. She he was just standing. I think he was standing next to her actually. But she was. She had the hiccups. So I went up to her and said, "Oh, I know how to help you." So I got a bit of ice and um, told her to hold it on her forehead. And her boyfriend. <laughs> and her boyfriend. I don't. I don't know if he knew what to make of it. The fact that I just went up there and started talking to her but yeah I'm not sure if it helped can't remember so Christine asks what would you say to your 18 year old self um, stop touching it so much <laughs> no um, what would I say to my 18 year old self this is I've got some different answers to this and it's going to sound I've got one answer that's going to sound quite bad uh, I put up with stuff that I shouldn't have put up with from people when I was 18 people took the the they took advantage a little bit uh, of me being young. I'm talking like in work related, in work situations, nothing weird necessarily, but I think I should have been a bit more, I should have stood up for myself a little bit more, perhaps. I'm trying to be careful how I word this. But yeah, I think I should have, there's situations where I should have, uh, should have, would have, I wish I'd just been a bit more forceful with the person just to say, look, no, you don't do this. You don't talk to me like that or you don't, you know. Because I noticed when I was about 18, a lot of adults, and not even that much older than me, people in their 20s, late 20s, 30s, the amount of talking down they did, like I was a kid. And I guess I suppose I was, I was very immature physically and mentally, but I was still 18. I still had all the rights that other 18 years have. 18 years? 18 year olds. I was old enough to, to get married, to have kids, to have a job, to pay tax, to, I don't know if old enough to have a mortgage at 18, but I was old enough to drive a car have a driving license you know all those things so I think I was old enough to be treated with respect I think it's 
kind of what I'm saying. So maybe I'd have told myself to stand up for myself. Maybe. But moving on from that side of things, I think... Get a decent job. I think, like, get, get, get a, some kind of skill. Because when I was 18, I kind of already at that point figured that it was too late for me. Bearing in mind, 18 is very young, but I, I did feel that I'd kind of run out of time. And I was just going to have to take any old crappy job that I could get. Although reality, 18 is very young and I could have trained to do something but I never did so I think maybe but then there's the thing isn't it like if I hadn't gone through all the rubbishy jobs moved all the different times that I moved and lived in all these horrible places and if I hadn't done that I wouldn't be here <laughs> I would um have ended up doing the stuff that I'm doing now which is hopefully useful for people so it's a weird one yeah I think I wish I'd been a bit better with money but back then I didn't have any money so it wasn't even an issue there was no money to to be good with if that makes sense Yeah, I think it's, if I could pinpoint there's certain different things that happened that I would have wish I'd had someone to give me advice. But I didn't. I had no, not really anyone to give me advice for most of my life. So, I've, you know, I've, I've asked a few people what they would do. and But I've always been quite, not surprised, probably not, not surprised at all, but the amount of opinions rather than advice based upon their own thinking their own prejudices their own biases and I guess maybe that's all that we can do we go you know we talk from our own experience and if you say to someone who doesn't like water doesn't like swimming do you feel I should go to uh you know, go on a holiday to the swimming holiday thing, you know, a place where there's loads of swimming baths and swimming pools and stuff, they might say, no, I wouldn't do that if I were you, because they wouldn't do it. So I don't know. Have I answered the question? I don't know. I'm really not sure. What would I say to an 18-year-old self? Maybe that I can be something. Maybe tell myself that I'm not stupid. I'm not an idiot. That I do have the ability to be somebody. That my voice is just as relevant as anybody else's voice. I struggled with that at 18. I struggled with that for a long time actually. I don't struggle so much now. Would you believe? But... Yeah, for a long time, it was, even in my 20s, I didn't believe that what I had said, that I had, what I had, I had to say was more relevant or equal to anyone else, but I, I said it anyway. So, you know, in my 20s, quite often I'd say the opposite to what I should say. Not particularly bright of me, really, I guess. But hey, I've got itchy, itchy leg. So. I know. Okay, I've got one star, do. When I was 18, go back to karate. So I stopped doing karate when I was 16. And... In fact, if I was, I'd like to go back to 15, that would be the age, if 
I could go back to the age of 50, where I could just say to myself, look, things are difficult, but there's, you know, you need to make, you need, you need to lay down some rules for other people. There's rule, you know, it's, can't just let everybody else there, what they decide to affect my life and change my life. <clears throat> and basically the, when I was 15 with the family sort of dynamic changing drastically, I didn't have the, you know, that stability and I wasn't able to, you know, I just felt like, oh, I had to go and, you know, I went and got that job in the chip shop and it was the pretty much the worst thing I could have done, really, because it was evenings, I couldn't do karate anymore. And I almost didn't care because everything else that was going on, I didn't sort of care anymore about the karate when it was pretty much my life. So if I'd have had the opportunity to give myself, I would say not just advice, but instruction, don't leave school because I didn't really have any choice because my grades were so bad. I didn't have, I didn't make any effort at school. But then try and get a job or get a job, not try, because it's not difficult at 16 or 15 to get a job. So get a job, a decent job, not well paid, but something that will you know, lead to something better. Try and find something I'm interested in and continue with the karate. Have my make my evenings free. Get involved in the karate. Do that. Get my black belt. Then maybe become one of the instructors. And you know, that's kind of part of what I'd probably try and do. And then out of that would have come a lot of self confidence. And probably because I was 16 when, you know, well, when I was 16, I probably would have been given, got some kind of council help with accommodation. So I wouldn't have been reliant upon living above where I work or anything like that. So yeah, that's, that's probably what I would have done. But that was 16, it's two years earlier. Because it was a shame that I gave up on the stuff that was so important to me at the time for quite a while. There's a few different things, I mean, but I'm, again, I'm going back to when I was 16, but even when I was 18, I probably would have, I had an opportunity and I think I should have took it and gone and worked with worked for the carpet cleaner who used to come in and keep clean the carpet. So I used to work for him a little bit every now and then, do a little bit of, uh, ex, you know, part-time, just helping him. And he was lovely, I really liked him. He was very friendly, respectful, and he was an entrepreneur, and I just thought there was just really positive vibes from him. So, I kind of, if I could have gone back there, I would have worked with him. Just gone and work with, regardless of how much he had, how many hours he had, and just help him to build the business up, and then perhaps go on to do my own business. Maybe got myself a driving license and a car, and maybe I do wonder what my life would have been like if I'd have just lived it normally. You know, got a job, got a driving license, got a girlfriend, maybe had a baby, maybe got married, got a mortgage. 
all, all that kind of stuff that was very much the norm back then. Uh, it still might be, I don't know, but definitely back then it was. I do wonder how I would have fared. I just don't know. Yeah. But yeah, so I've answered it in a roundabout way, I think. Eat less sugar. <laughs> the thing is, when I was 18, I could eat anything and I'd burn off the calories before I'd even eaten. I, you know what I mean? Just the, the, the action of moving my jaw would burn off calories. Uh, so thanks for the question. Tonya asked me, I'm curious how your new university course is going. Have you started yet? Have you adjusted to being a student again? Well, Tonya, I, th I think I probably answered it earlier in this one, but no, I haven't started. It does start in October the 8th, I think. But I was on there last night, went onto the portal, and all the stuff is there. I haven't, I think I might even have to start booking tutorials, which is, that's one of the things I'm not really. Uh, feeling particularly confident about but you know I'm just gonna I won't do anything till October then I'll start booking stuff and start preparing but I'm looking through it I'm gonna go through it every day go on the portal every day and make it part of my day to day life go through the coursework go through the, the different bits and bobs and uh you know find my way around the library and all the different articles that are available and yeah just just do that because I'm going to be spending three hours a day on the course it's supposed to be 16 hours a week so what's that three six nine twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen so it's just over three hours a day five days a week or you know if it's seven days a week then it's going to be less <laughs> I don't know 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14 15 16 so yeah it's, it's, it's a three hour, three, three hours a day for five days kind of so it is fine. I mean, how have I adjusted to it? So I guess I haven't really needed to adjust yet. I'm starting to mentally adjust to the idea of being a student again. Doesn't feel the same. I'll be honest with you. It doesn't. Because last time I was, my whole life was changing to become a full-time student. I, I didn't move straight away, but you know, shortly after I started the course, I moved to a different town. And, yeah, it was, everything was different. It's a very, 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 um, there was a large adjustment period. And also being at university, you know, five days a week, it was just, uh, it was hard, hard going. But with this, it's, I mean, there's like Facebook and there's, there's different uh, forums and things like that to contact other students on the course. But I guess my interaction with other people on the course, the amount I can do as little as or as much, I guess, is up to me. When I was at university before, I had no choice but to be around the other people that were on the course because they were in there. They were there, you know. So this is going to be. I mean, there's the benefits. There's the. I mean, that that was like the worst thing. The best thing was the people. Without 
uh, one particular person, I wouldn't have even I wouldn't have even finished the degree. Genuinely, I wouldn't have done. So this is where I am going to be on my own. So I need to motivate. I need to be self motivated. But at the same time, it won't matter what my mood is because if I have a you know, an off day or whatever, or it's I'm not stuck to having to do it at a certain time of the day or even on a certain day. I choose the hours. I choose the time that I study, which means that that flexibility is what I need at this point in my life. If I needed it then as well, but I just didn't know it. I didn't know it. So for me, yeah, I'm starting to get my head around it. I think once it starts, I'm a little, it's a little bit of excitement in me. There is a little bit. Just the idea of being a student and, yeah, I know technically, you know, I've already got a degree. I've, I'm already got under undergraduate degree. So I'm kind of do have a qualification. But this is going to be, I don't know, it's just going to feel different. It's much more academic and yeah, I'm looking forward to it actually. I'm not, there's a little bit of like, ooh, but generally it's a positive. I'm feeling positively about starting it and finishing it. I mean, it's gonna. I mean, yeah. I need to take every year as it comes. So, the first year, first, second year. You know, at the end, the sixth year will be probably the dissertation, I guess. And then that will be that will be it. But, blindly, six years. That's a lot. It's a lot of years to be doing it. But it's fine. I'm going to be... I hope that it's going to help me as a person. And maybe it'll help me to help other people. I'm not sure how, but I hope I hope so. There are certain aspects, certain things I'm very interested in. And especially when it comes to the brain and the thinking and a very I'm interested in positive psychology I'm interested in you know the effects of what we say to ourselves or what people say to us how it affects us how our thinking affects us things like that that's just something that I I mean I've been very interested in for a long time so, yeah. Although I'll be studying the psychology, I'll also be, I'm going to be quite interested in looking at the, getting more depth. Maybe more breadth as well. So, you know, maybe I'll, talk, I'll be studying about the developmental sides of psychology for maybe zero to two years old but then what I can do is go back and look at some books and stuff and I can see where it is now but I see how it got to where it is now where the research has come from that leads to here does that make sense I think it makes sense but that, that's it. I think, I'll be, I, I think, and I, I do admit, I'm very impressed with myself. I do believe that I've answered all the questions really straightforwardly. No beating around the bush, going around the houses. It's been very to the point. Yeah. I think the, the, the correct word is super groovy. That's what I've been. I've been super groovy. So, and that's it. I'm going to go. I've done the recording. I kind of want to upload it because I promised to 
do it on a Friday and I didn't. And oh, here we go again. Mr. Reliable. So I'm going to get this done. I'm going to watch the boxing now. The main fight's about to start. That's why I'm really going. <laughs> so I'm going to watch that and then I will upload, edit and upload the recording. So it is. So thank you for everyone. Tonya, Christine, Kathleen, Diana and Ben for your uh, questions. It's now 12.06. So I reckon by 2 o'clock this afternoon it should be up and uploaded onto the podcasts and I will share it on the Facebook group. So thank you very much for listening. Please remember to be kind to yourself. Lots of love. Bye.